Greetings. My classmate Suse O. Ramos Delgado and I, Andrea Lebron Santos, from the University of Puerto Rico, Recinto de Rio Piedras, are going to be presenting some important scientific evidence about an analytical technique called hydrophilic interactive liquid chromatography, which is also known as HELIC. Hydrophilic interaction liquid chromatography is a technique that has become increasingly popular over the years, promoted by the need to analyze the separation of polar, hydrophilic, and ionizable compounds in complex mixtures, which are difficult to separate by other methods like reverse phase or aqueous normal phase liquid chromatography. Another reason for the increase in popularity is the widespread use of mass spectrometry coupled to liquid chromatography. Due to its partially accurate solutions high in acetonitril, with a limited need of adding salt, it is almost ideal for electron spray ionization. Some characteristics are to be taken in consideration for helix stationary phases, which may affect and in some cases limit the choice of mobile phase composition, ion strength, buffer, pH, and temperature since mechanisms other than hydrophilic partitioning could potentially occur. Helic is based on the HPLC instrument, but uses a hydrophilic column which allows us to separate, identify, and quantize a mixture of compounds. The components of a basic high-performance liquid chromatography system are shown in the simple diagram above. A high-pressure pump is used to generate and meter a specified flow rate of mobile phase, typically millimeters per minute. An injector is able to introduce the sample into the continuously flowing mobile phase stream that carries the sample into the helic column. The column contains the chromatographic packing material, also known as stationary phase, needed to affect the separation. A detector is needed to see the separated compound bands as they elude from the helic column. The mobile phase exits the detector and can be sent to waste or collected as desired. Helic is a method developed for the separation of polar compounds. This can be acidic, basic, sweeterionic, neutral compounds, or mixtures of these. Sweeterionic compounds are those that have more than two functional groups, of which one is positive and one is negatively charged. Sometimes some samples can be nucleobases, purines, and pyrimidines. Helic is used in the biochemistry area to separate a complex mixtures and determine different nucleobases simultaneously in a sample. These are some general steps for sample preparation based in the analyte appearance, whether it's a solid or a liquid. It's important to filter the solutions before conducting the experiment. This will remove any particles in the solution and minimize interference in the instrument's analysis. Remember, the analyte must be a hydrophilic, polar, or ionizable compound. To determine if the analyte is suitable for the helic method, we must first learn about the properties of the compound. We must study his hydrophobic character, log P, its pKa, and its distribution coefficient, log D. Log P is a measure of how hydrophobic or hydrophilic the compound is. Usually, both log P and log D are carried out in immiscible solutions like octanol and water, which means these two solvents are not soluble in all proportions. The hydrophobic character of the analyte will tell us how hydrophilic that compound is, which plays an important role in the interactions with the stationary and mobile phases. For helic, negative log p values are needed. This indicates high hydrophilicity. The more hydrophilic the compound, the better its retention time. Log D provides an indication of the ionization state of a compound in a solution at a specific pH and is more representative of the hydrophobic character in buffer conditions than log P. This is due to log P being more used for neutral compounds while log D is used for charged compounds. As you can see in the equation, log D employs the concentrations of the ionized and unionized forms of the analyte in the solution. In helic, larger values of 1 in log D is required to determine how ionizable the analyte is. Log D is pH dependent. The pH of which the log D was measured must be specified. Buffers are utilized so that the introduction of the compounds do not perturb the pH since the helic columns have a specific pH ranges. The pK values of the analyte indicates its acidity. The larger the value, the weaker the acid. This helps us determine the effect in the solution of the column and the type of buffer needed.
To develop a method, first we must select an analyte, determine its log P, log T, pKa, and solubility in the mobile phase. If log D is larger than 1, then a helic method can be developed depending on the analyte's charge. Some typical stationary phases are silica, amine, thio, amide, and suiterionic. The selection of the stationary phase depends on the physiochemical properties of the analyte. It is suggested to match the analyte log T values to the degree of polarity of the helic phases. This is, the more negative the log D value for an analyte, the greater the degree of stationary phase polarity required to retain it. To continue developing the method after choosing the electrical charge of the analyte, we must choose a column. Usually, silica or amide are the most popular. After column selection, we must select buffer and mobile phase conditions based on the type of column selected. Afterwards, the solution can be analyzed. Typical eluents for helic consists of 60 to 97% acetonitril in water or a volatile buffer. To obtain reproducible results, at least 3% water should be maintained in the mobile phase. This amount of water is necessary in order to ensure sufficient hydration of the stationary phase particles. Also remember that a higher concentration of organic solvent in the mobile phase will increase the retention time. Solvent strength goes from acetone being the least to water being the stronger. On the graph to the right is a comparison of different mobile phases of some columns while the concentration of acetonitril is increased. We can observe how as we increase the concentration of organic solvent in the column, the retention time increases. Helic is performed using a polar stationary phase. The mobile phase employed in helic is highly organic in nature, 60% or larger solvent concentration, containing a small percentage of aqueous solvent, buffer, or other polar solvent. The water in the mobile phase forms an aqueous rich layer absorbed to the polar surface of the stationary phase and an aqueous depleted layer in the mobile phase. Polar analytes preferentially partition into this aqueous rich layer and are retained through a combination of partition, polar interactions like hydrogen bonding and iron exchange. As you can see in this figure, when the solution reaches the column at time zero, all the analytes are together. As time passes, the analytes start partitioning with the aqueous rich layer through interactions like hydrogen bonding, hydrophilic partitioning, and in electrostatic interactions. The operational limits of the technique can either be estimated or obtained through experimentation. There are guidelines developed by FDA, Eurachem, US EPA, UPAC, etc. Each guidelines give a different approach to determining the operational limits. Not all approaches are fitting for all analytical methods and different approaches mean different assumptions. A type of approach to determining the operational limits of the technique is through a calibration curve. This data should be linear and homocytastic. Homocytacity describes a situation in which the error term, that is the noise, is the same across all values of the independent variables. Heterocytacity is present when the size of the error term differs across values of an independent variable. Increasing heterocytacity increases affecting linearity of the calibration curve. A chromatogram is a representation of the separation that has chemically occurred in the HPLC system. A series of peaks rising from a baseline are drawn on a time axis. Each peak represents the detector response for a different compound. The chromatogram is plotted by the computer data station as you can see in figure H. Since sample compound characteristics can be very different, several types of detectors have been developed. For example, if a compound can absorb ultraviolet light, a UV absorbance detector is used. If the compound fluoresces, a fluorescence detector is used. If the compound does not have either of these characteristics, a more universal type of detector is used, such as an evaporative light scattering detector. For example, a UV or ELSD detector may be used in combination with a mass spectrometer to analyze the results of a chromatographic separation. This provides, from a single injection, more comprehensive information about the analyte. These are some examples of chromatograms coupled with different detectors. Figure 1 shows extracted ion chromatograms of amino acids in dietary supplement using helic electrospray detector mass spectrometry. You can see the separation with time of these amino acids and their respective intensities. Figure 2 shows the separation of nucleotides 
on Nucredur helix column with UV detector. At a certain wavelength, one can see the separation of compounds with time and their respective absorbances. Helic uses a polar stationary and mobile phase. One can decrease retention by increasing polarity of the mobile phase. On the contrary, reverse phase liquid chromatography uses a non-polar stationary phase but a polar mobile phase. And to decrease retention, one decreases the polarity of the mobile phase. The main advantage of Helic lies in the application of retaining polar solutes, particularly in the analysis of drug compounds and their metabolites. There are several stationary phases available to choose from, depending on the experimental measures. It simultaneously allows the analysis of more than one compound. Mobile phases have high organic content, which generally allows improved signal noise radio with MS detection, lower detection limits, and low back pressures due to the low viscosity of the organic rich mobile phases. On the other hand, this technique has its limitations. Helix mechanisms are kinetically slower than the common mechanisms in RPLC. There is poor retention of anions on silica. Peak shape distortion can occur from mismatch of sample solvent and mobile phase. Also, the use of aqueous sample solvent may cause column overload, reduce retention and resolution. The use of helix is often highlighted as advantageous with ESI MS detection by virtue of the fact that the highly organic mobile phases ensure efficient dissolvation, which in turn leads to lower detection limits. In the example shown below, in order to retain nicotine and cotinine using RPLC, a highly aqueous mobile phase is required. This results in low signal noise radio, even after adjustment of the electrospray conditions. When the same two compounds are analyzed using helix, the signal noise radio for nicotine is 15 times higher and 5 times higher for cotinine than in RPLC as illustrated in the following chromatograms. One of the most common challenges in helix is distortion of peak shape that arises from mismatch of sample solvent and mobile phase as shown above. Using an aqueous sample solvent, which impairs the partitioning of analytes into the stationary phase, is disadvantageous to the chromatographic peak shapes. To ensure good chromatographic performance, it is recommended that the sample solvent has an organic content greater than 50%. Many instrumental companies sell liquid chromatography instruments and helix columns. Here is a list of some of these vendors including Thermo Fisher Scientific, Sigma Aldrich, Agilent Technologies, and Shimatsu. The price range varies with each company whether the instruments are new or used. Helix columns are used for many applications, for example, to analyze bioanalytical compounds. In this scientific study, 14 amino acids were separated based on their side chain polarities, as you can see in Figure 1. A iHelix Fusion Plus column was used packed with charged modulated hydroxyethyl amide silica and coupled with an ESIMS detector. The retention times, classification of amino acids, and PI values are summarized in Table 1. In this other scientific study, two types of helix microbore columns, polyhydroxyethyl A and TSK gel amide 80, were compared to normal phase silica HPLC columns for the analysis of highly polar compounds of cucurbital maxima leaves. The best separations of standard mixtures and plant samples were achieved with the helix microbore column using TSK gel amide 80 stationary phase, as you can see in Figure 2. Most helic applications are found in the pharmaceutical and clinical markets. In this research paper, a new helic method has been developed for the simultaneous determination of PSH, DPH, and DXH in cough cold syrup. Detection is carried out using a variable wavelength UV-Vis detector at 254 nanometers for PSH and DPH and at 280 nanometers for DXH shown in Figure 2. Figure 1 shows the effect of pH on retention behavior. Test method for simultaneous determination of PSH, DPH, and DXH was validated to include requirements of International Conference of Harmonization Guidelines. Parameters like specificity, linearity, accuracy, precision, range, robustness, and system suitability were examined and found to be acceptable.